Hey guys, Jay Young with Young Red Angus. Today's video is going to be about what we've learned our first year of doing Johnson Sioux Bioreactors. The highs, a lot of lows, and everything in between, but overall I feel like it's been a success and uh, we've already started applying some of the compost on our fields. So let's get into it. So right off the bat, I was really excited to do the first Johnson Sioux Bioreactor and I made a mistake. Uh, when we were filling it, I got it far too wet. And as you can see here, as I'm squeezing it, uh, way too much water is coming out. You don't want that much water. You just want one or two drops of water to trickle out of the product as you're squeezing it. So make sure as you fill it that it's not too wet. There shouldn't be any liquid running out the very bottom of your bioreactor. Right around late May, I contacted John Nicewanger and I had him come over to our farm. He brought his uh, microscope and his computer so that we could look at it under a microscope to see. And as you could see in that earlier picture, that compost was really gross looking. I uh, wish you could smell it. It smelled like really gross manure um and so i knew i had issues and that was that was in the bottom the top didn't stink but anytime you have a smell it's an indicator of anaerobic conditions so what john's here doing in my shop is we're looking at the compost underneath a microscope and we're looking for things um that would be anaerobic and so um this slide right here is a, a nematode nematodes are good if you have the right kind um you don't want a spear uh, on their mouth. You want like a, a, a what would look, actually look like a, a mouth on the nematode. But this is this is where we knew we had issues. See the little uh, thing moving around in there. That's a ciliate, and ciliates are a sign of anaerobic conditions. So um, he just came over, kind of confirmed what I was concerned about, and verified that we had anaerobic conditions, not just in bioreactor. Uh, the first one, but also in two through six, just not as bad as, as the, the first one. The first one had ciliates all over it. I was really excited about these bioreactors. We used a feed truck to fill them, and you can fill them so much quicker with a feed truck and it's easy because you can weigh the amount of water. So you put the weight and product on there and then you put the weight and water in there and then you you know what your ratios are. So I don't know if I got these a little too wet still or if it's because I used the feed truck. Um, either way, I had anaerobic conditions. I contacted David Johnson. He suggested uh, they went anaerobic because of the feed truck but I have neighbors who used a feed truck and theirs didn't seem to go anaerobic. Uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. We're doing some experiments this year and we're gonna hopefully uh, iron those things out. Whatever it was, they went anaerobic and we had to fix the, uh, the problems. As you can see in this uh, footage, the bioreactors on the far left, that's five and six. Those are the ones that I used a double stack method on so I could get more compost um, in one bioreactor. Okay, as you can see in this clip, a lot of gnats. Uh, gnats are uh, an indicator, or flies are an indicator of anaerobic conditions. So if you see that going on, that's, that's something that you wanna be aware of as well if you're looking for anaerobic conditions. Keith and Cameron Edwards, uh, the other people I know that, that did the bioreactors in my area, they didn't ever have gnats, so make sure you don't have gnats on your bioreactors. So in June, as we looked at the compost on a microscope, this is how bioreactor number one looked. And as you can see, the compost in bioreactors two through six that had this kind of uh, texture. So it still had some ciliates, but not nearly as much as the first bioreactor. All right, so what we did was is we took the top of the cage off the double stacked bioreactors on five and six, and we created a new bioreactor. 
we filled the bottom of that smaller bioreactor with pine cones so that we'd have good airflow coming up from the bottom. And then we took the cage off the original bioreactor one and we just started flipping the good stuff that was on the top uh, onto the bottom with the, the pine cones and then just filled it up. And man, it reeked. Uh, that bottom really smelled. But um, once we did that, it really lost its smell. And by September of 2020, um, you can see in this video, that compost ended up being really nice compost. So at the end of the day, uh, was it a failure? Was it a success? Uh, I feel like it was a success because even though it wasn't the true Johnson Sioux bioreactor method because we had to flip it uh, to keep it good, we didn't give up. And that's what I want to encourage you guys in is if you screw up, you know, get advice and get advice from a lot of people. I asked on a social media platform, hey, what should I do with this? How can I fix it? And I had people telling me, throw that crap away. It's no good. And I didn't accept that. I asked around and and got different opinions on what to do. And, and that's what we did with this first one. And uh, I believe it, it worked out and we just applied it on our corn and that stuff, um, you know, it smelled really good and it looked good. To me, this is the coolest thing to see it go from that gross looking stuff uh, to that just by flipping it and um, being patient. Like that was really encouraging me. So on bioreactors two through four, um, I tried this method, which I was given uh, advice on is to add wood chips to it. And so we put it out on the floor. Uh, I think a couple of them we did for three days and the other the other one we did for, for four. And we added a little water and added the wood chips and just kind of let it breathe and, um, you know, let the air get to it. And then we, you know, put them back together. And then bioreactors five through six, I didn't do anything with them. I just poked a hole in them uh, a bunch of times. And actually... Both of them ended up to where they didn't have the smell or the anaerobic conditions. Uh, this first one you're seeing, that's Bioreactor 5. We didn't flip it. We didn't do anything to it. I just poked a bunch of holes in it with a metal rod. I don't, and I don't really know which method was better over one over the other. Um, we looked at them underneath the microscope here uh, yesterday at John's place, and I don't know that we could really tell all that much of a difference on them they were they were both good compost though uh, after we had done this this process so at this point after the failures I had, I went back and I watched uh, David Johnson's videos on how to how to make them. Made sure I took uh, a few better notes and uh, just tried to be as by the book as I could possibly be. Other than the fact that we're still using the RT three shuttles um, as as our as our frame, um, but as as far as how I filled it and everything else we did, uh, we tried to fill it and do the water ratios that he suggests and do things that way. Uh, we used wood chips on this one and uh, beardless triticale hay, and it has never gone anaerobic, and it was really, really good compost when we looked at it underneath the microscope uh, yesterday. So just to make sure the compost was good, I went back to John Nicewangers. John, shout out to you, thanks for all your help. Um, we saw some cool things. We saw some microarthropods, like you've seen these photos. We're able to see some fungal hyphae. There were quite a few nematodes. We looked closely at those to make sure that they didn't have the spear on, on their mouth. They had a regular mouth. And lastly, the most encouraging thing was is all the fungal spores we found, specifically on, on the last compost especially, there was every single place you went to uh, under the microscope, there was fungal spores on every single one of them. Well, guys, that concludes our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to support us, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions for us, like what happened to Bioreactor 7, 
If you're paying attention, you notice I left out Bioreactor 7. If you have questions about like what happened to that or anything else that, that I might have left out or didn't think of, uh, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Uh, right now it rained, so I was able to put together this video. Um, I'm going to try to do one more video today. Um, that'll be about how we're actually applying the compost onto our ground. Uh, we bought a Bio 5 machine. It's slightly different than the machine John uses. So be looking for that video in the next couple of weeks. Have a great day and thank you so much for your support.